What's going on, YouTube? Interviewing is just not easy. Uh, and it's something that you need to have good knowledge of before going into. You don't want to just walk into an interview and have no clue what you're doing. So in this video, we're going to go through five easy steps that you should be doing when you're interviewing to ensure that you land that job that you want. You're probably watching this because you're stressed out about going into an interview. Let me start this whole video off by telling you, it's okay. At the end of the day, if you're not meant for that role, you won't end up in that role. Um, a lot of jobs are out there. You will have opportunities. And 10 years from now, this interview that you're worked up about, it won't really mean so much to you anymore. So... With all that being said, there, there is still a lot that you need to do on your part to ensure that you have done everything that you can possibly do on your behalf to make sure that you're giving your best foot forward when you go into the interview. So let's cut to the chase now. We'll get into the first thing that is crucial to interviewing and that you should build repetition on to make sure that you crush your interview. And just as a side note, I'm sorry that I sound all congested, um, not feeling well too lately. Uh, so that's why you hear some of this, you know, nasal sound in my videos. Um, but I just want to get the videos out for you guys. And uh, this has been one that's been on my mind lately. So I wanted to put it out and maybe I can help somebody out. So thanks, guys. So the first thing you need to do in your interview to absolutely crush it is do your research on the company. And this is something that a lot of people may not think about. Companies want to know that you have interest in their business, that you have interest in what they do, and that their culture fits you and that you fit their culture. Uh, a lot of companies will love to see when you're interviewing if you show some appreciation to their company uh, and you ask questions and you ask them, you know, what, what kind of uh, culture is this under right now? Um, what kind of work will I see day to day? What kind of work do you guys do? And why do you find your work important? These kind of questions are really going to help put you at the top of the list when they're thinking about candidates moving forward. Um, if you have a candidate that shows no interest in the company, then they don't want you there. They don't want you to be a part of something that you're not happy and uh, enjoying while you're there. So it's not going to work out if you're not showing appreciation for the company. Of course, I'm not going to give you suggestions without giving you some um, examples on how you could do this. So to research the company, it's as easy, folks, as going to a browser and just searching up the company that you're interviewing with and check out some things about them. Uh, go down now to their About Me. That's a good place to go to get a good foundation of their mission statement um, and to see what they're really about. The next step you could do is find out some folks maybe through LinkedIn or Glassdoor that currently work at the company, um, especially especially the ones that are interviewing you. Um, you get some information about them. Uh, find uh, some uh, relevance in what they do versus what you do. You bring that kind of stuff to the interview and they'll be shocked and they'll also be very grateful for the time that you went out of your way, even if it was a few minutes to do your research on them. And um, I had a personal experience of my own where uh, this has benefited me multiple times. And I think it'll be of great benefit to anybody else who's going into that interview. So let's go on to step two now. Step two. Step two is going to be be their solution. And what do I mean by that? Well, what are you going to do when you get to the company? Why are they hiring you? What purpose is all of this for? Well, it's a simple answer. They have a problem that needs to be met by a solution. This solution is going to be met through a candidate. They're looking for a candidate to meet their problems and find solutions. This is the backbone of business. You need to make sure that you are putting yourself at the top of the candidate list by telling them, I can be the solution to the problems that you're facing in today's age. So I'm going to give you some examples of how exactly you can do that and some things that you may want to ask. In IT, we face problems every day. Um, and we're always uh, kind of characterized as the firefighters putting out fires left and right. 
So this part here, for examples on how we can ensure um, that we can be an asset to the company and give them a solution to their problems can be very simple. Some of the things that you might want to ask your employer is what tools are you guys currently using right now? They have a tool set. This tool set needs to be uh, utilized in an efficient way that can be processed for data and also uh, communicated to the rest of the team. If you can prove to them that the tool sets that they're using today are things that you've worked with and things that you've dealt with, that gives you a, a plus on the candidate spreadsheet to put you up a couple notches to let them know that this candidate here has some interest and some experience with some of the tools that we've been working with. Step number three is going to be be generally happy and build rapport with the interviewer. What do I mean by that? I mean, when you get into this interview, you know, you have to find a clear balance between business and also personality. So when you're on the beginning of the call, if there are people that are waiting to be um, zoomed into the meeting uh, and there's some empty time uh, to spare, don't sit there just silently. Uh, get some rapport built with these hiring managers. Let them know that you're a person, you know what I mean, that you're not just you know, the next candidate up that you're somebody that has a good personality that could fit their culture and fit the position. Uh, you, you know, it's easy just to do simple things. Uh, you ask them how the weather's been. Um, you ask them what are some of their interests. Uh, you take some of the research that I was talking to you about from before researching the company and you bring up some of those topics. Uh, these are the things that are going to build rapport between you and the hiring manager to ensure them that this candidate is somebody that we could get along with on a daily basis. The, the truth is, when you get hired, you got to work with these folks every day. They have to work with you. They don't want somebody that they feel like they can't get any communication out of that's just going to be introverted and um, staying to themselves. There has to be, I, I understand that there are a lot of introverted folks out there, but in IT, there has to be a level of communication. You cannot be 100% introverted and in security especially and not be able to uh, speak out on current vulnerabilities, things that need to be addressed and changed within the network. You have to be able to talk to your network engineers and your managers and let them know of these threats that the company faces. So you can't just be an introvert. You have to break out a little bit. You don't have to be a crazy extrovert, but just be happy be outgoing, and be somebody that they could see themselves working with every day. Step number four is going to be something that should be very obvious for anybody who's going into IT. You need to understand the technical questions that these interviewers are going to be giving out to you. You need to understand that there's usually two parts to an interview, especially in IT. There's going to be a behavioral and a technical. The behavioral is usually first, and they're going to go through some general rapport with you and uh, build a relationship with you and uh, ask you some behavioral questions. The second part is usually technically based. This, this interview is going to be filled with a lot of technical questions that are a part of the role that needs to be filled. Um, you need to be able to uh, answer these technical questions. You don't need to be 100%, but I would say you at least need to know 60, 70% of the questions that they're asking you. So what are some things that you can do to improve your technical skills and ensure that they know that you understand what needs to be done technically to secure this position? Well, it's quite simple. You can easily go to Google and type in the job role that you're looking for and go through and look through some of the common questions that come along with that title. Um, if you're going to be a, a SOC analyst, go on Google and type in SOC analyst interview questions and you'll start to see a common theme or trend of questions that are being asked. And a lot of times you'll have folks that these are direct questions that they had themselves, um, which is very beneficial. You go along there, you find these questions, and you start to get a general understanding of does this kind of look like the stuff that I already know? And if it does, brush up on it. If it doesn't, go back and relearn this material before the interview. You want to have a basic understanding of the basics of the job role. Um, 
it's unfair for a company to expect you to be, um, you know, a pro at everything, so to speak. But you should have a general knowledge of the job role that you are getting into. And you need to make sure that you understand and you can apply some of these general IT basics. For someone going into security, they might want to know the network protocols and how they're used. You may want to know how the OSI model works and how it applies to daily troubleshooting in IT. You may want to know some vulnerabilities in today's age and how they're conducted and how they can be mitigated so that they do not infect a whole entire network. Um, these are the things that you should be really brushing up on to ensure that when they ask you these questions in the interview that you understand how have a clear knowledge. Now, don't get yourself all worked up thinking that, you know, you're going to fail because you're not Mr. Technical. You know, everybody starts somewhere. If you show these folks that you, you have interest and that you're willing to learn, it can go a long way. If you get asked a question, don't try to, you know, tell them a lie about you know, you know, the answer is this, this and this, but you know, it's not that. And you don't know the answer. Just simply tell them, I don't know the answer, but I'm willing to go ahead and research and learn this answer for myself so that I can ensure that I can provide that solution to the company. These are the kind of ways that you're going to want to switch direction. You don't have to fall into the pit of I don't know. Just tell them that you don't know and explain how you're going to even find a solution to that. This is the kind of stuff that is going to get you a job. The last step of interviewing is something that a lot of people don't do and they really don't understand uh, how greatly it makes an impact to securing that job. The last step that you need to know is to interview the interviewers. Understand that an interview is a mutual agreement between the company and the candidate. It's not just them looking for the right candidate, but it's you looking for the right job. So you need to understand this and make sure that that really resonates with you. So when you get into these interviews, it's not just a interviewer doing the interview to you. It's also you need to be asking questions to the company about things that are going to be benefiting you, um, things that really impact your life, you know, your benefits in general, health insurance, eye, dental, all that kind of stuff you need to talk to them about. Um, it's It needs to be more of a two-way communication in an interview and not just them interviewing you. Um, if they only give you, you know, like a few minutes at the end, use up that time and then politely ask them if you can, you know, get the rest of your questions out so that you're ensured that you want to be at this company as well. In today's day and age, um, things have changed and, and companies want to know that you want it, you're enjoying and want to be there as well and not just one way. Um, so there are ways and things that you can ask to get some kind of knowledge from them on what they do and how their day looks like. Hey guys, listen, I really hope that I was able to provide you with some good IT interviewing steps that you should be taking to ensure that you're getting the best possible chance at getting your foot in that door with the company that you want. Remember, interviews are interviews. You're going to go through a lot of them and you're not going to get a lot of them. Um, and that's just the way it is. So don't get yourself too worked up. Take some simple proactive steps and do all that you can do. And at that point, you know what I mean? It's left up to God and let it go. And you, you pray for the best and you let it go. If it's not meant for you, it's not meant for you. And at the end of the day, you're going to be in the position that's meant for you and the job that's meant for you. Um, I just want to be there to ensure that you understand that there are some things that you can just do to improve your chances. Uh, and that's it for this one, guys. And uh, like I said, I really hope that somebody watching here maybe has an interview tomorrow and these things really help them out. And the next day you do great on the interview, maybe even get the job. Let me know down in the comments for sure if you're one of those people. I would love to hear it. And as always, like, subscribe, hit that little notification bell down at the bottom. This will ensure that you get all the new videos that I'm uploading and you'll be alerted so you can watch them first. And thanks guys for watching. As always, I truly do appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one.